Hi guys, this is Lazy Admin and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, and in today's video, we are going to talk about Nginx, load balancing and reverse proxy. But before we dive into the configuration, let's talk more about load balancing and reverse proxy. Well, load balancers are most commonly deployed when site needs multiple servers. Let me show you in an example in here. Uh, that we are users and we want to connect to a web server uh, hosting uh, a website. So in this scenario, we are deploying load balancers because the volume of request is too much for a single server to handle efficiently. Deploying multiple servers also eliminates a single point of failure, making the website more reliable in sense. So most commonly the servers that are hosting the website content are same and the load balancers job is to distribute the workload in a way that makes the best use of each server's capacity. It prevents overload on any server and results in the fastest possible response to the client. Let's talk about reverse proxy. Well, deploying a load balancer makes sense only when you have multiple servers. It's often sense to deploy a reverse proxy even with just one web server or an application server or more. You can think of the reverse proxy as a website's public face. Its address is the one advertised for the website, means the public IP, and it sits at the edge of the site network to accept requests from web browsers and mobile apps for the content hosted at the website. The benefits are quite a lot. Like, like you have increased security. Nobody is landing on your website directly. Means uh, nobody is landing on your actually web servers directly. So no information about your backend server is visible outside your internal network. So malicious clients cannot access them directly to exploit any vulnerabilities. Many reverse proxy servers include features that help protect backend servers from distributed denial of access, denial of service attacks. For example, by rejecting traffic from a particular client IP address, that is blacklisting or limiting number of connections accepted from each client. Well, this is a part of uh, edge firewall if uh, the network guys can recall. Uh, there also you have a feature that you can limit the number of connections. Well, the second feature it can give you is increased scalability and flexibility. Because clients see only the reverse proxy in the IP address, you are free to change the configuration of your backend infrastructure. This is uh, this particularly useful in load balanced environment where you scale the number of servers up and down to match fluctuations in traffic volume. For argument's sake, let, let's say you are in a cloud environment. So it makes sense uh, when you don't have uh, too much volume of users coming to your website. So you decrease the number of nodes. And once you know that there will be more traffic uh, in time of, let's say there's a football match you are airing and let's say you are hosting a, a, a channel or a streaming website. So it makes sense when there will be more traffic, you are going to increase the number of the web servers uh, twice or thrice or whatever suits the need. Well, another reason for deploying a, a reverse proxy uh, is for web acceleration, reducing the time it takes to generate a response and return it to the client. Techniques for web acceleration like compression and caching. In compression, server, uh, server responses before returning them to the client compressing server actually responses them and that is uh, your uh, reverse proxy and for instance uh, the compression is with gzip it reduces the amount of bandwidth they require which speeds their transit over the network so it's like compression will reduce it's same like the example uh, when you're sending an email uh, with an attachment so people will ask you please uh, decrease the size of attachment because there is a certain limitation over attachments that you cannot send beyond that. So you do what 
you have a file and you do what you try to compress that file you put it in through winzip winrar or uh, a compression software and in terms it does what it compresses it and gives you a smaller file so you have a smaller size of file and it requires less time to download it obviously so this is how it works so second thing is caching before returning to the backend server for response the reverse proxy stores a copy of it locally when the client makes the same request the reverse proxy can provide the response itself from the cache instead of forwarding the request to the backend server this both decreases the response time to the client and reduces the load on the backend server so that is actually the difference between load balancers and reverse proxy but reverse proxy do actually the load balancing because it makes sense when you are doing a reverse proxy and back end there are multiple servers actually you are uh, sending request or forwarding request on multiple servers so in terms we will say load balancers and reverse proxies is an interlinked uh, concept or you can call it it makes sense folks so that's it about uh, load balancing and reverse proxy uh, if you have any questions please uh, ask me in the comment section i will try to respond to you as soon as possible so let's jump to our uh, configuration uh, well it's the same like the previous video we have uh, uh, two web servers uh, that is configured with static pages and we have one server that will act as either load balancer or the reverse proxy so uh, vm1 is actually our load balancer and vm3 and vm4 is basically our web server let's see the web server is running and i will show you again uh, how i created this so i did yum install httpd this is what i did last time i'm not going to do it because i have already installed so let's see of the status of the uh, Apache server that if it is running or not system CTL status HTTPD and yes my Apache server is running let's head to the VM4 same thing we did here as well yum uh, sorry yum install uh, HTTPD the why we put here is because we don't want to enter why during the downloads here and it keeps on prompting us so that's why and uh, right now i'm going to check the service status okay and well it's uh, active and it's running so let's head back to uh, our browser and check if the servers are running so as you can see uh, both of my web servers are posting a static uh, web page that is like welcome to lazy admin web server this is web server 01 and this is web server 02 so that's all we are going to talk about engine so we are going to install the engine x uh, on our vm uh, 01 so let's head back to our putty sessions and get let's get started so here we are on our vm 01 so here we are going to install yum install nginx well for CentOS it's not going to work because the repositories that are required uh, to look for nginx packages is not there so before that we have to yum install people release so this is what we require so I will say yes and I want to download this yes i have installed apple release so let's now install nginx yum install nginx and yes i want to install it didn't took too much time yeah that's why i love open source uh, it's like really quick so let's check out how is it displaying a page or not every web server shows a default page so let's see but before doing that let's see if the nginx service is running or not see this 
nje next okay uh the service is not running uh, but in the meantime let's check uh, uh another service if we have it installed because if two service run on the same port that is apache or nginx they they usually start at port 80 so it will be conflicting and one of the services started the other one will not start so gpd systems tdl status http so let's see system ctl uh, status httpd well system ctl status httpd could not be found http service could not be found so it's all good we don't have the http service running so let's start system ctl enable nginx and system ctl start nginx so system cpl status nginx and yes we have the nginx service running so let's now head to our browser and check if the nginx is running or not so the, this is the ip of our my vm and welcome to send to us the community enterprise operating system so here we go we have the nginx running so now we will configure uh, the nginx uh, server for to work as our load balancer but remember folks i'm not doing it for the first time uh, because i have already added uh, i was i have configured uh, ha proxy before so uh, i have already added port 80 in my firewall commands uh, so in my firewall settings so don't forget to add that in your firewall so firewall hyphen cmd hyphen hyphen list all so you can see i have already allowed port 80 and 8080 while i was doing a test on ha proxy so well this is the command actually you have to do to add your uh, uh port 80 in your firewall so it would be success and after that you have to reload the uh, firewall so this is it then uh, your nginx uh, will operate on port 80 and it will not be blocked by firewall so let's get started with nginx configuration so for the configuration you know that the configuration files lie in this etc directory structure and here we have nginx we will do ll and we have nginx configuration so we are going to make a backup for this configuration dot back in case uh, we mess up with the configuration file and we have to restore it so we can use this so now we are going to do vim nginx dot conf and here it goes so by default it's like having these default options that you can fine tune for your configuration and dip by default it's listening on port 80 so this is the configuration so basically all you have to do is if you are using it as a reverse proxy you have to add a location location in here so basically you have to add if you have a server so what we will do is uh, i will show you uh, uh, the configuration here you will add and uh, that will make it as a reverse proxy so here it is you will write proxy underscore pass http and your application server where uh, application server is actually the ip of the server uh, that you are forwarding the requests on it is that simple uh, but now we are going to do what we are going to create this nginx server as a load balancer for our two web servers that are lying outside so let's comment this configuration okay and we will add our own configuration in here so now we will add another configuration lines here to make it as a uh, load balancer so it's going to be uh, a 
upstream definition first upstream servers uh, let's get started with that so upstream server upstream sorry upstream backend not the upstream server upstream backend server and we will type the IP for the server 8200 101 so these are two, two of our servers that we are going to do a load balancing on. So we'll close the configuration code here and let's add the backend. Uh, uh, the backend. Uh, we have already defined the backend. Let's uh, define the server. So basically the server uh, is going to be the front end. Front end will be listening on which port? So it, it depends upon you which port you want this to listen on. I will make it listen on port 80. So it's listening on port 80. So right now we have to provide the same thing, location. So it's the same thing we are going to paste in here. Oh, what did we do? We didn't know anything. So let's copy it again, once again. Location, let's copy. So Yes, I want to paste it. So location. Yeah. So, so proxy pass HTTP here is going to be my backend server. So by the name, our, the upstream servers we define the pool as backend. So here I'm going to write backend. So that's it yep that's it so we are going to close the configuration save and quit and that's it folks uh, this is all we have to do it's as simple as that let's me verify one more time that i have properly closed all the quotes It's fine. So let's see. We have properly closed all the codes. It's the starting one. It's, it starts and it ends. And here we go. We close all the codes. That's it. So we need to verify the Nginx configuration before starting the Nginx. So Nginx uh, minus T. It will verify the configuration. If it doesn't verify the configuration, it will tell you there is a syntax error somewhere in the configuration file. So let's start restart Nginx service. Okay. Restart Nginx. And Nginx is restarted. So yes, it is active and running. It has restarted. So that's it. Let's head back to our web server and see how it goes see we are landed on our first of our web server and second time we landed on second of our web server so this is how it works folks it's as simple as the HA proxy was so please give it a try and tell me in the comment section if you liked the video please hit like and do subscribe my channel thank you for watching and take care